Hello, our lovely viewers, watching us from the comfort of your homes. Once again, you are in my class on SHSR on Joy Learning. This is one of our revision shows on integrated science. This topic today that we'll look at is atomic structure. Before I go on, most students are scared of chemistry. And I know why I'm saying most students. It's all because the concept is abstract. But we are here on SHSR on Joy Learning, revision show, to simplify things and make it easy for you to remember in the exam hall. Along the way to, we'll tell you some pitfalls and mistakes you do so that you can prevent it mostly by what the chief examiner has said. One of the critical things the chief examiner has said is our ability to understand the concept of chemistry. So by the end of today's lesson, this topic that many students are afraid of will be simplified with examples. Today's specific objective is that you, the student, to be able to describe the different building blocks of matter we're able to differentiate between elements, compounds, and mixtures. Describe the formation of covalent and ionic compound. Then relate atomic number, mass number, isotopes, and relative atomic mass, among others. So if your friend is not with you, go and call that friend to sit. Or call the friend to tune in. We are about to roll. We start with the idea of matter, but today's main topic is the atomic structure. Before we can learn there, you have to get a connection with matter. We, we say anything that has mass and occupies space is matter. Roughly everything in the universe is a matter. Because if you don't have mass and you don't occupy space, then maybe you don't exist. Like in Ghana, we say a ghost, you don't exist. But once you exist, you have to have mass, and, you have, and if you occupy space, that is volume, then we say you are matter. I'm using the word mass here, not weight, because once you move out of Earth and you get to the other planet, sometimes you become weightless. But even the weight, you have mass, and in that place, you occupy space. That's why we define matter as anything that has mass and occupies space. All the things which are classified as matter are classified in three states at our level. I'm using the word at our level. We have solid, liquid, and gas. Today, that's not our main focus of our lesson. It's just a prelude. Irrespective of you being solid, liquid, or gas, we divide those three states into pure substances and mixtures. So in the matter group, you have two main groups, the matter, the mixture, and the substances. The substances too are further divided into the area today we want to look at elements and compounds. Elements and compounds, which we hardly see. Now before we we'll go on, Try and follow me. If you get it, thank be to God. That's the end of everything. You understand chemistry throughout. I'm going to move away from the classroom. Not teach us chemistry, but something else. So follow. I hope you know the army. Or the security service in Ghana. We have the army, the navy, the customs, the immigration, all these are security services. But how do you distinguish them? How do you distinguish them? Okay, on our board, we are going to draw circles for, you, for us to look at this thing well. Let's say this is a unit in the military. The army wears green dresses. So let's say army. These are the individual people in the army.
the navy. So let's call this the army. Now let's look at the navy too. Let's use triangle for them. Yes, if you are wondering what I'm doing, I'm still teaching chemistry. Now look at it well. Let's say we have a unit of the army about to go to a war. There may be about 100 individual soldiers in the unit. They will dress the same. They will put on the same beret, the same camouflage, the same belt, the same shoe. When you look at them from the top, they look the same, green and black. If you look at the navy from the top, everything in white. So at one time, you see them as one color. But when you get into it, you see that they are individuals that has come together to form that unit. So let's give names and to the chemistry we are doing right now. Now the whole unit will be called the element. Now these individual soldiers who come to form the unit, let's call them the atom. I hope you are following. So the unit together is made up of individual things. So the elements are made up of atoms. Remember that the individuals in the military, all of them have the same unique identity. Same cap, same dress, same belt, same shoe. So for you to call an element an army, then the atom within it is the same. That is why they are all the same and we call them the army. If you go to the navy, they wear white. White dresses. And the individual navy men also will be called atom. So when you look at the navy from the top, they are all wearing white. When you get deep or you go closer, you see that there are individual things there. Now, if an army is going to a war, I don't know the strategy they use. Maybe they hold hands in hand and they all move that could be one strategy so the whole army can get into an action that means the whole element can get into an action there's another option the individuals within the army group going to the war though they are in a group they are on their own and everybody will get into action on its own so two options the whole army can be in a fighting range or together fighting, then the individuals can also fight. Same, when an army man is walking, he sees citizens maybe messing up to protect the state or the asset of the state. They would take action as an individual soldier passing by and see something happening. He can take action. So what I'm trying to say is that the individual soldier within the group can be in the group and react or can be on its own at one time and get into an, a reaction or an action to safeguard something but no matter what he has to be in that identity of the dress so once he's in the dress he has that whole character of a military or a soldier or an army to be able to react or to be in action so what I'm saying is that one soldier one individual who is an atom can his own as a soldier get into action that same person retains the character of the army in this case the army is the element so back to the chemistry what they are trying to say is that an element exists but within the element are make up of individual things you call the atom now each atom 
within that particular element are the same, like the military dressing. All the people in the unit are the same. So every atom in one particular element, like people in one particular army, are the same. If you go to another element, like the navy, which is a different element, now they also have their own characteristics, their own dressing, everything is the same. Remember, a navy man can also get into action maybe on the sea. When he sees people messing up there, though he has not been commanded, he can get into action and safeguard things. So what we are trying to say is that atoms retain, they are the smallest individual particles of an element that retain the character of the element and can also get into action. I hope you are following with this example. But something else can also happen. We have 100 people in the army. We can decide to take only two or three of them to come together and send them an intelligent mission. Once they are going on the interview, we may not call them individual soldiers. We may give them a different name because it's a different mission. Because they are now going to do something different, we give them a total different name, different, they may not dress like that because they don't want people to see them in their army dress. So they take on a new character. That's when that two people or three people came together. So atoms in the element can on its own, one, two or three of you can bond together by a certain strong attraction. Then that individual two or three has come together though they come from that element will retain a different the new composition will be different from the individual atoms example we'll get to some examples same with the navy two we can pick one or two put them together bond together have a certain unit and change their identity once they exist on their own differently from the navy though they came from the navy but they exist as a different unit because they are going to be sent to do something that whole new something they are going to do will have its own character away from the navy different identity from the navy yes that is how chemistry can be understood now watch it we can also in a certain mission pick one military one navy and burn them Though they don't have something, uh, a lot of things in common. The address are different, how they match, what they use are slightly different. We can pick one, one, and bond them. And they also from a different unit. So atoms from the same element can bond together and form a molecule. One atom from one element, one atom from another element can also bond and form a molecule. The bond, we can only call it molecule if what holds them is a chemical bond. If that force of attraction holding them is a chemical bond, then we'll be doing bonding today. So with this understanding, we are saying that an atom here, from here and this can also bond and form one unit. Whilst atom with these two can also bond and form an entity or another unit i hope you are following with these examples let's now look at the real definitions of atom elements molecules compound and mixtures now with atom as i have described like the military it is the smallest particle or basic unit of an element that means the individual of soldier of an army the smallest particle or basic unit of an element that exhibit the property of the element and can take part in a chemical reaction so if you compare it to the army you cannot understand some examples of atom on your screen is the hydrogen atom oxygen atom and sodium atom now what about elements as i said like the unit army units with about 100 together 
An element is the simplest form of a pure substance, which cannot be split or broken down or separated into simpler substances by any ordinary chemical means. Let me explain this. If in the army, if you divide the army, the are military, if you divide them into what? It is like having something in here. Having something here called A. And A is the only thing there. How can you divide A into smaller form? You can't. Why when they say cannot be divided? We are not saying that you cannot divide them into atoms. If you divide one atom, it's the same as the atom, as the, the next atom. What we are trying to say is that we don't have two different separate things that you can say when I divide, I have A and B. For example, on the screen, if I have A and B in one unit called an element, definitely I can divide this into two and have two different simpler forms but if it is a like the first one here you can't divide it further because if you divide it is still a that is the meaning of cannot be uh, split into simpler form by ordinary chemical means we we'll also look at the periodic table later now every element because the atom is the simplest thing and every atom is the same as the other atom in that particular element then they have the same set of property because if i wear green a uh, black beret green belt that then my next brother in the military same 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 so we are saying that we have the same set of property we are all trained to shoot we are all trained to shoot but if you go to the Navy, they are also different. They have their own set of property. Though they also have individual things called atom. They, their makeup is different. In the Army too, they are also called atom, but their makeup is different. Their properties are different. So we are saying that atoms of a particular element have the same property. So the big property we see out, when you stand at the top and look at them literally, green, green, green. When you go to the individual, green, green, green. So they retain the same characteristics like the element. Then elements are named, when you get to the periodic table, by letters. They have their real names, but to shorten it so that we can write it easily, we use letters and most we call it symbols. These letters or symbols have been derived sometimes from history or the Latin words. So on your screen, you have how gold, with the spelling is G-O-L-D, but rather we name it A-U from Urum, copper from Latin word cuprum, iron from Latin word ferrum, then sodium from natrium. So you may be asking, sodium is S-O, but why N-A? Today we are telling you because of the history of the Latin names we got them from. Now, we have also explained molecule already. When I said you can take two individual military men, put them together, and they become new something, different from even their element, because of the way they are bonded together in that new something. We can also form molecule when we take one navy and one military put them together so two ways either only military people we take two or three together and they form something new or we take one from the military run from the navy and put them together also form something new once they form that something new and that thing can exist in nature on their own so example we have hydrogen and we have oxygen all of them have atoms then we take some of the atoms of hydrogen and we take that of oxygen and burn hydrogen gas in oxygen and form what we call water though we took like the army and the navy together in this case we have formed something new that something new called water exists in nature as water that new something has nothing to do with hydrogen and oxygen but we can 
find sometimes a way to break them. So back to our slide. A molecule is a small group of atoms that exist as a separate particle or, or entity in nature. It is the smallest unit of a substance that retains the chemical and physical property of that substance. Now here, let me explain it. Water is a molecule. But to get that plenty water you drink, it starts with the H2O, small. Another small one, another small one, another small one. And you put it together. So that big water is the same when it is the individual molecules that came together. So the, the big molecule character is the same character of the small molecules that has been put together. So we say that a substance, like let's say water, the makeup, which is the molecule, retain the same property of the substance. The unique thing about molecules is that atoms are chemically combined. Let me say chemically because a force of attraction exists. We have atoms that form molecules maybe of the same element, like hydrogen gas, or of different elements. So based on the way they are made, we have types of molecule on your screen. We have monoatomic mole molecules. Where though the entity existing in nature is unique, the number of different atoms there is still one. That means H plus H. There are two atoms there, but they are still the same element. Neo, argon, radon are all examples. Diatomic means that, sorry, sorry. What I meant to explain is that in this state of monoatomic, the element is, molecule exists in nature on its own. But in that molecule, it's made up of only one element or atom. Only one atom. So when you take helium, on the periodic table, it's an element with atoms in it. That nature of that element with it together. It's a gas existing on its own in nature. So this one, we didn't need to bring anybody to add up to. It's only one thing. But where we get to, I need to get hydrogen gas or the oxygen we breathe in. We need two oxygen atoms to join together to form one molecule. Same with chlorine you will find out that there are two chlorine that come together to form a chlorine gas. In that case, we call it diatomic. I believe you are watching us right now on your set. You can also join us on Facebook on Joy Learning TV. Small caps, small letters on Joy Learning TV. Go to Facebook. We are streaming live there. And can join us. You can post your question or try to answer anything. So if you are in a car, don't rush home. You can still follow us. Now let's look at another type of molecule. We have the triatomic molecule. Remember in the diatomic, we have same. If we have a molecule of two atoms, same. Then we have the Triatomic like ozone, where we have three molecules of the same kind chemically combined. Shockingly, we also have molecules that, as a molecule, at one time we call them compounds. And I'll be explaining compounds so that I get a connection and the differences between that and the molecules. Take your time for 10 seconds and look out on your screen. Yes. A compound is a substance which contains two or more different now atoms or elements. Here we are bringing the concept of element in. Like 100 units of military can join with another 100 units of the 
navy to form something new so that they can attack or go on a mission. But these ones are chemically combined. And one unique thing about this one is that the ratio of their combination is always constant in that particular compound. Like water, it's always H2O. It never changes. Gold anywhere never changes. Same with glucose. We know it's from GHS, C6, H12, O6. That equation is the same wherever you go. If it's sucrose, it will change. So what we are saying is that a compound is a substance which contains two or more atoms or elements chemically combined in which the ratio of their combina uh, combination is the same throughout wherever you go. Now the properties of a compound dif differs from those of their constituents. The glucose as a unit is different from their C, H and their O. Aluminium oxide, which may be seen when there is some kind of rusting. The rusting has, the property of rusting is different from the property of aluminium and the oxygen that came together. So if you go back to the molecule, you'll find out that the difference is there. So try and check. Then compound can be split into simpler substances. The process of splitting compounds into smaller different because two or more different things. So when I divide it, I can have an A, I can have a B. It's not only A inside, A and a B. So I can have two things. The process of is called decomposition. On your screen are some differences between elements and compound. It resurfaces in the exams. An element consists of the same kind of atoms, whilst compound is composed of different things. Elements are monoatomic, only one thing is in it, whilst compound is made up of different substances. Only limited numbers of elements are known, about 140 something. About 92 of them are coming from nature. Usually we don't make them, they come from nature. Compounds, plenty. We keep combining elements in many forms to get compounds. Then we say the property of an element is the same as the property of its atom. But in compound, because two different things or, or three different things came together, everybody has its own different property different from the compound we formed. Now the mixtures. Compound, two or more things chemically combined. A mixture is from where two or more elements or substance, the substance could also be compound now, which are not chemically combined, or we can say physically combined. So the air that we have is a mixture. Oxygen on its own, carbon dioxide on its own, nitrogen on its own, which are not chemically combined. That means no bonding. In a mixture, the identity of the substance involved are retained and are mixed in the form of solutions, suspensions, and colloids. On your screen, to have some differences between compounds and mixtures. Take your time from what I've explained. Give you some 10 seconds to go through what's on the board. So, a new substance is formed when a compound is formed. In mixtures, no new substance are formed. If you put sand and iron filings together, nothing forms. If you put your gary and sugar nothing forms. The constituent element cannot be separated by physical means and a compound, but only by chemical means. Very difficult to separate. But when you get water, it is difficult to separate water back to hydrogen and oxygen. By a mixture, you can use iron filings, a uh, magnet to hold, to just pick the iron filings from the sand and leave the sand somewhere. So very easy to 
Now in compound, I always said that like the glucose, the ratio of the individual elements coming together are always the same. Mixtures, it changes. The way you make your garlic today and sugar is not the same you make the next day. Now, on your screen are more of this. Energy is given out when compounds are formed. Then there's no energy given out when mixtures are formed. Also, let's look at the difference between element and mixture. What we had on the, at the top was compound and mixtures. Now, let's look at element and mixtures. In an element, it's homogeneous. That means everything is one, like the military and its unit. A mixture is heterogeneous. Two or more things are brought together. An element has a constant composition since it's made up of one type of matter. The mixture, as we said, always two or more things added. So when you get to the exams, always remember, mixture has two or more things added, which are not physically combined. So remember your gari, sugar, soakings, and other examples. Then remember your sand and iron filings. These are all mixtures. Then remember compounds like your salt. Very difficult to split them. Then an element has a definite physical property such as the melting point, boiling point, and density. A mixture don't have such uh, properties. Now that we know much of this, the basic building block which led us to knowing all this, which was the atom, which could be combined to form a molecule. Even when two elements are mixing, it is still eight atoms that are mixing. Now we, are, we want to look at that structure of the atom. As a revision show, look on the screen, you've seen this before, from GHS to SHS. The story behind how they got to get atoms is from Dalton's atomic theory and other scientists. But it came to be understood that all atoms have the same structure. Every atom have a core part called the nucleus the central part, then around it are shells. We mostly be using the word shells. Reality is that it should be layers, you can call it shells, but this is the real meaning. This is a core thing with charges and masses. And this one, there are electrons who want to come, but the electrons have kinetic energy, ability to move close or move away. Based on the energy level of the electron, if the energy level is low, it can come closer. If the energy level is high, it kind of repel or push away from the nucleus. So it's not like a line there. So all those with similar energy levels, let's say lower ones, all of them will be somewhere here because they have similar lower energy levels. Those who have higher energy levels will move a little bit away. So they are all going to be in that form. And imaginary, we are assuming they are in layers or in shells. So we draw shells around it. So when I say shells, I mean energy levels. Those with the same energy level are within the same layer. Then if you are repelling and going back, your kinetic energy is very high and you are going back. Because there has to be some attraction, the more you go back, I can't hold you easily. So you can easily be lost if you are far from me. That's why the last shells. So on your screen is the nucleus I've pointed to with proton and neutrons. Then I've pointed to core shells and outer shell. Each of them have electrons. So electrons also be called inner electrons or core electrons and outer shells. What do I mean? Let's look at something here. So this will be the outer electrons. These ones will be the inner or core electrons. One this is the look at the valency shell. So if you are in the outer then we also we can call you the valence electrons. We will come to ions and you understand the rate place. 
So based on this, scientists was able to measure and also know the charges. On your screen are the subatomic particles of an atom. Then look at the masses. Proton has a positive charge and it was way to have one mu. The spelling of the U there in science we call it A M U. Emu. Depending on how you pronounce it. Then electrons. It's so small in terms of weight that's about less than thousand the weight of one proton. And roughly the mass that they measured is one out of 1840. So it's negligible. That means there's no roughly no mass. But a charge is negative. From the cathode ray experiment, they got to know who is positive and who is negative. The neutrons also have a mass of 1 mu, but fortunately, no charge. Now, if you have a mass of 1 and a neutron of 1, and look at their position in the center there, and electrons have no charge. So, if I want to weigh an atom, where will I have its mass? Definitely in the center. So we call that one the mass of the atom. It can be found at the nucleus. So when you get to atomic mass. So more description. The protons and neutrons together are called nucleons and are located in the place called the nucleus or the central part. The mass of the atom, as I said, is in the nucleus. Go back and look at it. Because this one has So this one has one, this one has one. So this one has one U plus another one U. So you have two U. But the shells has nothing there. So the mass is this. Then two, we are also supposed to know that protons number don't change, but nuclear, uh, neutron number can change. We get to isotopes. So because of that, proton numbers identify the character, the property of an atom. And it's what, because it doesn't change, it's, it's bec because it doesn't change, it is what we use to identify and put them on the periodic table. Now, the electrons I spoke of, as you saw on your screen, are arranged in a certain fashion. I said the layers means the energy levels. And they saw that every time those closer to the energy level, only two electrons can be found around it. Then they went to the next energy level, they saw 8, 30, 18, 32, 50. This is, the chemist labeled it as first energy level K. And on your screen, you can see that I've put numbers in front of them, telling you the number or the maximum number of electrons they can carry. So K, L, M, N, and O. The formula we use is 2N raised to the power 2. So if there is an energy level of 3, that means you can find electrons on the energy level of 3. Then the, that, it, that shell can maximally take 3 to the power 2 will be 9 times 2. That will give us 18. That is why M is 18. But there is something we call doctor rule. As much as we can take 18, 32, 50 and over, depending on the nature of the element, most, elect and most elements 
prefer or atoms prefer to keep ma uh, the best that they can keep as a maximum as eight. Once you have eight to you can say your shell is complete. And that's what we call the octet rule. I know we've discussed a lot, we've spoken a lot. You have to think over it. We'll go for a short break so that you peruse what we've done. When we come back, we'll continue. Be ready with your questions. Welcome back, my lovely viewers. And they are itchy for us to continue. I think we've learned a lot. Before we go on, let's just highlight the key things we've studied. We've talked about matter. We've talked about the building block. That is an atom making up an element. We've also seen that atoms can together form their own unit and form molecules. Or we can move elements together to form a compound if they are chemically combined. And mixtures can be any two substances that are not chemically combined or physically combined. From there, we've tried to also look at the atom structure, the subatomic unit, the proton, the neutrons, and the electrons. We have said that the electrons are negatively charged Protons are positively charged, whilst neutrons have no charge. But the protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus, but they have masses. So their weight or their mass is what determines the weight of the atom. But usually the neutrons can change, but the protons can't change. So we mostly use the proton and that doesn't change, which is stable, to determine the character and other properties of the atom. And based on that, we able to number it as such. So when you get to isotopes, you understand what I mean. In addition, the weight of the nucleus is actually is what you use in, when we get to molar masses calculation to get the atomic mass. So we'll be looking at it and the relative atomic mass as we go on. So this is where we got to when we are trying to explain the third rule that though you can move up, the best is always to make sure your outer shell or your last shell, you are stable by having a complete outer shell. Either you can lose or you can add more and we mostly call it the octet. Though you can be 18, most of the octet has stood for the 8 number where always want to cap it at 8. But the main rule is to get an outer shell totally complete to make you stable. Moving on, we came to the idea that when you are giving electrons, electrons are arranged in that layers. Lower energy, closer, a little bit energy, next level, more energy, far. And we are saying that the arrangement of the electrons around an atom is what we term as the electron configuration. So electron configuration shows the arrangement of electrons within an atom in an electronic structure. So K always will take 2, L will take 8, M will take 18, N will take 32 and more. So assuming I give you an atom who has only one electron, we will have to fill it always from the lower to the highest. So on your screen, I'm going to show you what we just, this is what we used during our discussion. Going to show you how to fill it, then give you more examples. So we will start with, if I gave you only one electron, because this first two shells can only pick, this first shell can only pick two. Once you put one there, it's finished. 
you can't put any there. Coincidentally, in a neutral element, an element where the proton's number is equal to the electron's number, there's no charge. But what you are saying that once you know the proton number, you know the neutral number because they are always as if working hand in hand. It's like being in a class and you have equal number of girls with equal number of boys. We are always neutral. If we add more, one boy, then we have a B extra. If you have one girl, we are going to have a G extra. So if I should give you something like an atom with maybe number eight, what do you do? You will fill with two first followed by 6 to complete the 8. So let's look at this structure of some elements. So let's look at the hydrogen first. Hydrogen has only one. Only one atomic number. So watch it. That means it has only one proton. So I just put the one proton here. And it's... Sorry, I put the one electron here. And the inside is one proton. Note the neutron, zero. If we get to helium, two. Watch that after the core shell, after the core shell here, which is darkened, the next shell, which is the first layer, will be called shell what? K. This is also K. And K has taken the maximum two. Here, K took only one. If you go to lithium, which is 3, K will take its maximum to, and which letter will follow? Those watching from the screen, you see that it is L. L can take 1 to make a total of 3. Watch also the proton is 3, but watch the neutron has changed. It's 4. Because neutrons is not equal to protons. Let's go to oxygen, that is 8. Take your time and try to fill it. Fill the shells. The first shell, K, will take 2. The next shell, which is L, let's count. 1, 2. So let's number it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So L can take a maximum of 6, giving us a total of 8. So this is how we fill it. Anytime they give you a number, just put the letters down, K, L, M, and N. Start with the first root 2. Next, 8. Next, 8 in that order. Then, if they are S's, you know how to keep filling them. Let's look at chlorine, which is 17. Chlorine, let's count. The protons are 70, but the neutrons are 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So you saw what we did. First shell to second shell eight, next shell seventeen. We use this dotted approach in the exams, and it's a certain scientist approach to describing how electrons are. So the rest on your screen, sodium. So before even I write the number, check the proton, which gives you the indication of what we are supposed to have. Once the proton is 11, and the exam says electrical neutral atom, then proton is going to be equal to electron. So electron is going to also be 11. And how many shells are we seeing? You see that chlorine has three shells. While sodium also has three shells. Potassium also, there's an U here, also has how many shells? One, two, three, four. Four shells. Because 19. As you have 19, we start with what? 
L will be 2. Sorry, K will be 2. L will be 8. M will be 8. So, 8 plus 8, 16. Plus 2, 18. Still, left it 1. So, that 1 has to go to another shell. And we say that is 1 on that shell. From this, sodium, potassium, argon, chlorine. You can see that we have a, sometimes a lot of inner electrons. And we have some few on the outer. Whoever finds themselves on that valency shell becomes a valency electron. We'll look at that too. So, on your screen is the first 20 elements that you are required to know by the syllabus. And your far left, you've seen learning aid, how to remember it. So, I just run through the names. Hydrogen is one. That's the first on the periodic table. Helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, which is seven. Oxygen is eight. Fluorine is nine. But you check their mass numbers keep changing. Neo is ten. Sodium is eleven. Magnesium Mg is twelve. Aluminium Al is thirteen. Silicon Si is 14, Phosphorus is 15, Sulfur, typo error, Sulfur is 16, Chlorine is 17, Argon 18, Potassium 19, and Calcium 20. You are supposed to try and know it off head. Now, based on this idea, I kept saying that look at the atomic number and the mass number. I was saying number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. I've also stated already that electrons, protons are same. They remain same. They have a mass. But neutrons also have a mass. But... The neutrons keep changing in the nucleus. It can increase or decrease depending on the idea of isotopes. We'll get there. So we cannot look, use something that keeps changing anyhow to be able to depict the character of an atom. For example, if the Navy, you, you go everywhere in the world, the Navy wear white, the military wear the green. Now, what, wherever you go is the same because they have a character in them which remains the same. So when an element has a proton, wherever you go, if you go to another country and you find that and that has the same proton and you come to Ghana and have the same proton, then they are the same thing you are looking at. That is simple. Just something within them that makes the same. So like your school dress. If I travel and I see somebody wearing your school dress, your crest wherever even the person is in the car i know it's your student so same with this idea here the atomic numbers which is the one that gives you the character of the atom then the mass number which is a combination of the neutrons and the protons is also there and it keeps changing so this is going to lead us to a next topic called atomic, the atomic number. The atomic number. As I kept saying, the atomic number is the proton number. It's like the atom's number. It's the one that doesn't change. It is the one that we used to identify the element. So we call it atoms number or atomic number. In a neutral electron, the protons which are on the shell, they are able to move in that distance based on number of protons there. So if the protons are eight, you see electrons being eight, everybody matching one to one, unless it's not a neutral atom. So based on that, anytime they give you an atomic number, you'll be able to know the neutron number. 
So we say atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. A neutral number is the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. We use Z. Look at it on the board. Z here to stand for atomic number and N to stand for neutral number. But I remind you, when we were describing the atom, we said that masses, the only one with masses is proton and the neutron, and they are all in the center. Proton and the neutron, and they are all in the center. And they also have charges of one, masses of one each. One U, one U, whilst electrons have one over 18, which is negligible, which is very negligible. So we mostly see that the mass of the atom is in the nucleus. If you want to weigh the mass, it's, it's only the nucleus that is giving you mass. So we mostly call it the mass number of the atom. So on your screen is the mass number which we use symbol A to stand for it. We say the total number of the protons and the neutrons in an atom. That's what we can weigh. But to calculate an, the mass of an atom, there is something on your screen with how we write elements. You have X, which is the chemical element. At the top superscript on your left, we have the mass number. Then atomic number is down. This helps us to know the protons in an atom, which is giving you the characteristics of the atom and the position on the periodic table, and the mass numbers too, the weight of them. But we mostly use the atomic number in calculating whatever when it comes to more concepts. But there's a relationship between A and Z. So think about it. A, a which is mass number C, is made up of two things, P and N. Whilst atomic number says is only the N. So I have a P and an N. I'll show you the screen right now. You have a P, a mass number made up of P and N in the nucleus. We have also said that P is what? The atomic number Z. So on your screen we are going to look at your atomic number your atomic number which is the P then the mass number which is P plus N. We will hold on here we will go for a break when we come back, we'll continue with our lesson.